Hi everyone, it's Kathy Chenna, host with Tri-Cities Magazine, and we have a very special guest in the studio today, someone that is known to many, but it's the executive director of Tri-Cities Community TV. Jeff Scott is with us today. Jeff, I don't think I've ever had the opportunity of actually interviewing you, and I'm pretty excited because... I think after all these years of uh, you being the executive director and and uh, spearheading Tri-Cities Community TV, I think a lot of people out there still don't really know what community TV is. So I'd love for you to start uh, telling us, just define what is community TV as a whole? What does it mean for Tri-Cities and what does it mean for Canada? Uh, absolutely. Happy to define community TV. Uh, I should say as well that really uh, for those that have do know that we exist, We've essentially been doing a 20-year soft launch of community TV, just uh, producing programming in the region where we can with what limited funding we have, partnering with various community groups, um, but it's a very pale comparison to what community TV used to be in the past. Mm -hmm. So in the past, uh, and talking about probably the 70s and 80s now, mm -hmm. uh, the cable companies at the time were required to provide community TV. So the one cable company in town that had the license to make all this money was required to provide coverage of council meetings and what was called community TV. Um, now the unfortunate thing is community TV was never really clearly defined in legislation. So what that really meant was kind of unclear. What Rogers wound up doing was opening up community TV offices. So in the lower mainland there were over a dozen offices where people could walk in learn about TV production, if you wanted to host, if you wanted to shoot, if you wanted to edit, they would teach you the basics. It wasn't a production school, mm -hmm. but they would teach you the basics, and in return, you could hone your craft, and at the same time, produce programming that was of value to the community. Mm -hmm. So um, I grew up in Kitsilino, for example. There was an office that just served people from Kitsilino. Uh, programming there primarily and things happening in kits, right? Right, right. Uh, other offices, the Van East office, for example, was very politically motivated. Mm -hmm. uh, in the 80s, their programming was uh, much more along the lines of, you know, SkyTrain, how is that dividing our community, and other issues that, uh, you know, were more, uh, I guess, issues of concern to the community rather than just promoting what was happening with community groups. Mm -hmm. And other, other groups, sort of like the Tri-Cities here, was very sports-related. They had all sorts of coverage of uh, the Adnax and junior hockey. So every community had sort of their own interests and whatever people that were involved in that community kind of drove the content that would then be aired on Rogers. And it would be aired where? It was aired on Rogers. So on the, Rogers those that have a long okay. memory remember yeah. Channel 4 yes. as the community channel yeah, that used to I be Yeah, I do out remember there. that myself actually. Yeah, that's great. So how, how have you seen it change? I talked about the 70s and the 80s. Bring us up to the 90s and the 2000s. Uh, the sad change occurred uh, primarily when Shaw took over for Rogers here. Mm -hmm. uh, that was in the late 80s, early 90s, and they shut, it, they shut down all the community offices mm -hmm. very systematically. Right. Uh, the first office to shut down was, in fact, the office in the Tri-Cities region that was in Port Coquitlam on Kingsway. Right. And when they closed that down, they told all the volunteers, don't worry, you can come to Burnaby and volunteer there, where we we have a studio and facilities for you. Right. Of course, how many volunteers are going to want to travel from the Tri-Cities all the way to Burnaby and produce programming? But nonetheless, that was sort of their story. And, and eventually, they shut down Richmond and Surrey and Burnaby and centralized into a downtown core and eventually told the volunteers they weren't even needed anymore, that mm -hmm. Shaw knew what the community wanted and they could produce community programming better than without the volunteers, mm -hmm. essentially uh, kicking the community off the community channel. Right. Um, so that was a pretty sad time. Uh, in those days, Shaw was running pretty much three programs over and over and over again on a cycle. Um, Urban Rush was one of them. It was uh, well produced, but daytime TV, right. pretty much indistinguishable from daytime TV on a commercial channel. Mm -hmm. Programming that promoted the uh, restaurant industry, the beauty industry, fashion, those kind of things very little about what's happening in your own community anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so, pretty sad times, uh, which got even worse in 2017 when Shaw essentially just shut down the community channel. Uh, they essentially said to the CRTC, well, nobody's watching anymore because they've pretty much killed it. Mm -hmm. So, um, they, yeah, they were allowed to shut it down. Uh, but the CRTC is still anxious to see some sort of community TV keep alive. 
Um, I'm actually working with a, a group called CACTUS, the Canadian Association of Community TV Users and Stations. Big okay. long acronym. Yeah. But we advocate for community TV. We're located, we have members across Canada. And uh, we've been working currently on Bill C-11 and Bill C-18. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to get too in deep into that right now. But, but just in layman's terms, tell us about the bills. Yep. Just, uh, just a quick overview. Just what, what do they mean? You know, so people are understanding like really what's going on behind the scenes out there. Could you just give sure. us a brief description of the bills? So both yeah. bills, like many bills nowadays, are big conglomerate bills of yes, all sorts of things. Exactly. They but take our, a long time to pass. Exactly. Yeah. A long time to pass, and a lot of times there's certain aspects you agree and certain you don't agree mm -hmm. with. But uh, the uh, the aspects that we're working on, particularly with community TV. One is to provide a more clear definition of what community TV actually is, because right. that's never been really clearly established. Okay. So to establish that it's a non run by nonprofit organizations, it has community members who are volunteering mm -hmm. and producing programming that benefits the community as opposed to commercial programming. Mm -hmm. The other thing we're working on is actually creating a fund. So some people out there might be aware of the Canadian uh, Radio and TV Fund. Mm -hmm. It's out there for commercial entities that already exist to produce commercial programming to assist them with funding, but it's not available to access producers. So one of the things we're trying to work on is to create a similar fund that will be made available just to access producers. Mm -hmm. So those funds will be generated by things such as uh, taxes on cable companies, when cable companies buy each other out, a certain percentage of that cost goes into a fund and that will be a pool that's available for producers across Canada to tap into. Mm -hmm. So right now we have a bit of funding from Heritage Canada, we have had funding from community groups in the region in the past, mm -hmm. uh, especially a big shout out right now, we're getting funding from TELUS, uh, StoryHive, um, but we would like to see there be a pool of funding that would be more consistent and ongoing so that from year to year we wouldn't have to deal with trying to uh, produce whatever our budgets will allow. Right, right, exactly. Um, where do you see the future of community TV? Well, um, I do think there will be a return to community offices down the road. Once this fund has been created and uh, TELUS has been interested in funding community groups that are producing this kind of programming, uh, we'd certainly welcome Rogers or Shaw to the table as well, uh, whoever wins out that battle that mm -hmm. is currently happening. Mm -hmm. um, we would like to see them contributing, as they did in the past. Uh, and if they were to do so, then it's really incumbent upon the communities, I think, to, to create their own organizations that will create content. That's the biggest mistake I think we ever made in Canada mm -hmm. with regard to community TV is saying, hey, cable companies are nice guys, they can run it. Right. And a corporation never should be running a nonprofit organization. Uh, that, you know, they've got their own interests in mind. Mm -hmm. They're beholden to their stockholders, mm -hmm. not to mm -hmm. the public. Mm -hmm. So they will do what they can to not have to spend money on community TV. Mm -hmm. So you think that um, that organizations are going to start up again with with offices and things like that? That's what you're thinking. That is our goal, and really our goal here is to build a model that others will follow. Mm -hmm. So eventually if we have tap into that funding that has been created and we have funding from TELUS and Shaw and maybe a little community support once again, mm -hmm. we would have more than enough to open a, a fairly modest studio. We're not right, talking right. global TV or CBC or anything, right. but you know, right. a, mm -hmm. a room well, this you're size. Not you're not necessarily saying that Shaw's going to start up with the little offices that they had back in the day. No. You're saying community groups, if they can sort of get a piece of this pie and be able to, to, to go out there and, and lease a space, you know, something modest, that's what you're talking about, right? Okay. Yeah, so because it's much more like you, you have in the States with community right. TV that right. still exists, where mm -hmm, the, mm -hmm. it's nonprofit groups that are funded by the cable companies right. as, ex as opposed to expecting cable companies to run it, pay for it themselves. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts though on, um, on remote work? I mean nowadays like you know the pandemic hit and people had to learn how to do things you know from home and online and everything else. I mean I still see that there's a, a window of opportunity um, for community television to be out and about whether it's on location or in studio. I think that the you know Things that are happening now, you know, people are on TikTok, Jeff, they're on Instagram, they're doing reels, there's all this phenomenon, you know, going on, you know, with, with our boomers and, and our Gen uh, Zs out there. Um, you know, do you really feel that it's going to be like a viable option to, to keep something like this going, you know, moving forward? Like, what, what are your thoughts? 
I think it, the fund has been created. Uh, we're not talking millions. Uh, we're talking millions across Canada, but right. for an individual studio, mm -hmm. I would think a local TV production facility would be probably two hundred thousand dollars would be a good starting point. Yeah. Um, we don't need a mobile production vehicle yet, mm -hmm. although maybe down the road that would be a nice addition. Right. Um, but yeah, we can start start modestly and build from there. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I think um, you know the studio wouldn't be the only place we produce programming. Right. And, and uh, interestingly, a lot of what I hear from Telus is that that kind of they see a movement away from studio production. Yeah. But I beg to differ. Uh, you know, Global has a studio. CBC has a studio. Right. Sure, there's lots of programming we want to do out in the community. But you also need to have a studio to be able to bring in uh, community groups and other people in the community to promote what they're doing. Um, there has to be a core base where you can operate out of. We've, we've existed virtually for the last 20 years. I know, yeah, uh, exactly. And it's been a struggle. Yes. And it's possible. Yes. But really having a grounded uh, facility where people know that's that's where you're located uh, mm -hmm. is going to be the next big step for yeah, us. Yeah, I, 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 I tend to agree with that as well. Um, in terms of, I want to talk about, I, I saw something a long time ago that my husband was watching and it was called Rockinitis. And at the end of that show, I saw your name. I only know one Jeff Scott and I knew it was local TV that was producing it. And um, tell me a little bit about that. How did you get involved in that? And what did you, what did you do before you got involved in community TV? Well, uh, before I got involved in community TV, I was in high school, I guess. Right. So really, Major. I got in, uh, yeah. When I came out of high school is when I first got involved with the uh, community programming office uh, that Rogers ran in Kitsilino. So okay. I've always really been involved in some capacity in community TV. Mm -hmm. Of course, in the early days, I was just learning. I wanted to go to BCIT, so I learned to shoot and edit. Uh, with a plan of doing that but then within a year I was actually producing a magazine show with a lot of other volunteers I already was being offered work um, so I eventually just went into the industry as opposed to going to BCIT um, but um, around the late 90s when Shaw kind of shut down on the last of the programming offices the very last office to be shut down was actually the Van East office and that office, the volunteers took it over. They refused to be shut down uh, in the same way all the other offices were shut down. Mm -hmm. And Sh uh, at that time, Shaw did not want the negative press. So they said to uh, the, the volunteers at the office, you guys will support you for a year. After that, you're on your own. Um, I got involved with them, and we formed an organization at that co time called Independent Community TV. Okay. So that existed in Vancouver. And that was essentially the remnant. ICTV, right? ICTV, yes. yes. That's the acronym that I remember on that TV show that yeah. we were talking about. Okay, carry on. So, so that was really the only access TV show running for a number of years right. until I started forming Tri-Cities Community TV out here in the Tri-Cities area. But in Vancouver, there was a number of shows. Uh, there was uh, Sid Tan, who recently passed away, a very uh, big proponent of the Asian community, was strong, strongly involved with the head tax uh, being settled with the government, um, but he did a show called uh, Chinatown Today. Mm -hmm. um, Michael Wilmore, who you alluded to, did a show called Rockinitis, and there were a couple of other access producers who uh, hosted shows, and then people like myself provided the technical background to direct and switch and, and package the shows and deliver them to shop. So uh, yeah, those were those were my early days. Um, really, I was by the time I was doing ICTV, I was still working in the industry. Mm -hmm. And around the late '90s, when I transitioned out of the industry, I got kind of a bit burned out from working in film and TV. Uh, I started teaching at Columbia Academy in Vancouver, right. and it was there that I started uh, Tri Cities Community TV because I wanted to give my students the same opportunities that I had. So our students uh, who came from around the world to learn broadcasting could not only graduate with a diploma, but they worked with me to produce programming that went on Shaw TV. So when they finished their courses, they could actually go home uh, with also a document that said they had produced programming that aired on TV here in Vancouver. Amazing, amazing. If there's one thing that you want uh, the community to know, what would that be? Well, that community TV is not dead and that it is coming back. Uh, it is actually operating in other areas around the world. Uh, it, uh, it actually started here in Canada, going way back to what was called the Fogel experiment, 
with uh, Society Nouvelle out of Quebec and also with, surprisingly enough, the Film Board of Canada. But those were the very uh, sort of uh, the early days of community TV in Canada. And um, yeah, we're going to bring it back. Uh, it's going to take some time, but it has always existed in other areas around the world where it has been emulated. But fortunately, other areas where it's been emulated, they were wise enough not to make the cable companies in charge. Right. Instead, for example, in Australia, it's run out of universities, much the way that universities here in Canada may have their own radio stations. Right, right. They have their own TV stations in Australia. Yeah, we often listen to the UBC co-op, like different CITR, you can't yeah. beat uh, the yeah. music coming out of there, exactly. for sure. Exactly. So, same sort of thing with TV in Australia, in Japan, and in France. Um, they're done much the same way they are in the States, okay. where it's independent organizations that are funded through the government. So that is what we want to bring back here to Canada. I think community TV started here. We'd like to bring it back, but it just has to be funded properly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, what is next for you, Jeff? Where, where do you see yourself in the next little while? Oh, retirement for me. Uh, I'm really keen on uh, joining my wife in retirement years, um, but I do want to stay and keep supporting community TV. Right now I'm just working on how I can reduce my hours and uh, we're looking at bringing in talented people like yourself and uh, Marcus Farner who has been very involved with heritage in the community. Uh, he has worked at Poco Heritage and Coquitlam Heritage Society right now and Port Moody Heritage in the past and he's becoming a key member of our organization as well so we're looking for to build our organization not just volunteer wise with people who would like to learn to produce television but with people who want to really drive the content and to, to see a community station open here in the Tri-Cities. That's great. Now, uh, I know you said you're going to join your wife. Uh, your wife's a triathlete. Do you think you might be trying any of those uh, triathlete uh, things that she does? Oh, she would like me to join her, but I, I'm afraid uh, I'm needed badly as a Sherpa. So uh, I'm going to have to stick to that part of the job, and uh, I'll support her in her efforts, but uh, I think that's probably... The that's sorry, the most Shelley, I did try. Sorry. <laughs> There's a little conspiracy here going on. Um, you were listening to Jeff Scott, Executive Director of Tri-Cities Community TV, a gentleman that's done a lot um, for community TV as a whole throughout Canada. And hopefully, uh, as he said, uh, something that we wanted to leave you with is community television is not dead. I'm Kathy Chenna. Thanks so much for watching.